The National Museum of Ireland Country Life has the Irish Folklife Collection. These were the furniture from everyday life in the past. And one of a great one of our great collections really are chair collections. And what you'd be surprised is the variety of chairs that existed in Irish homes in the late 19th and up to the mid 20th century. So there's all this great variety of chairs and a lot of the times we don't actually know the makers of the chairs. As I say, there's great variety, different sizes, different shapes, you know, um, but one chair we do know about is what I'm going to call the Jack Serlis chair. Um, so the Serlises were from Drumkieran in County Leitrim and uh, this chair became really well known, I suppose, from the 60s and the 80s. Um, Jack really made it well known. But certain areas did become known for particular types of chairs and this chair, the Jack Serlis chair, has been associated with the, the Leitrim area and it's very distinctive and a, a fantastic design whose origins we don't really know but we do know that the Serlis family were carpenters and coopers going back for many generations and that this design um, continued and is associated with this particular family. The characteristics, I suppose, of the chair are um, its, its splayed legs. So there's a particular angle that the front leg is attached and splayed outwards, um, and that gives it a stability um, and also um, a, a comfort, I suppose, because it's, it's well made, it's firm. Um, the other interesting feature, I suppose, compared to modern furniture, really, is the fact that it uses the old uh, carpentry techniques, no glue used. You have your legs coming through the seat and then um, a wedge uh, cut into the, the top of the, the leg to strengthen and uh, tighten the joint. Jack Serlis uh, used his draw knife on his, on his mare, so it wasn't an actual mare, but um, the piece of equipment that uh, were, were called a mare because you were like sitting on a, on a horse and he would have his uh, draw knife and that would he would shape. Um, and this beautiful film of Jack uh, from the 1980s by uh, David Shaw Smith in, in the Hand series. So we're very fortunate, I suppose, that the Serlis chair hasn't been lost in time and that it has been um, uh, kept alive and is still alive today and this project is really part of that. Good design lasts and this chair is appealing today as it was when Jack Serlis made it. The first step is treating your wood, preparing it and marking it. This is a plank from an ash tree from Ballinamore. This timber has been air dried for five to six years. The next thing to do is cut out all the parts.
As the timber dries, it can shrink and curve towards the heart of the tree. Keep this in mind when choosing your piece of wood and preparing your seat before drilling. Mark the points of drilling for the legs and the four spokes. When drilling for the legs, drill at an angle to allow the legs to be splayed rather than straight. Mark the placements for the wedges in the spokes and legs in line with the grain. Then cut on the line with a saw uh, at the same depth as the seat, if not a little bit less.
When fitting the legs and spokes, make sure the wedge is placed at 90 degree angle to the grain. Thank <laughs> you.